Hey, it's Eitan. It is a rainy day here in Hollywood, uh, but the incredible history of this uh, building behind me is keeping me warm and dry. Uh, at least I hope so. Like, my notes are getting wet, my phone is getting wet, my uh, satanic sweater is getting wet. So, the building right behind me is the Hollywood Studio Club. And from 1926 to the uh, year it shut down in 1975, this was uh, a dormitory for women who were um, working in Hollywood or aspired to work in Hollywood. So the club itself dates back to 1916, uh, about a decade before this building was constructed, uh, when a bunch of young actresses uh, who had moved to LA to work in the silent film industry would get together underneath the Hollywood Public Library and read lines together and just get to know each other. There was a librarian there that realized that there was a need for this kind of uh, congregating for these young women. And so she put them in touch with the YWCA uh, who worked with the, the film industry to create like some kind of at least temporary home for them. And there was a, um, a home just uh, up Gower off of Carlos Avenue uh, that was set up to house them on a temporary basis. It could accommodate about 20 people at a time. So by the early 20s, it became pretty clear that Hollywood had a problem with how it was treating the young women who were uh, coming from the Midwest and uh, trying to establish careers. There were a couple scandals that broke uh, um, that led to this idea of the extra girl. Uh, a girl who was a transplant from somewhere else who came here um, with bright hopes and dreams and ended up being chewed up and exploited by Hollywood uh, sexually and otherwise. And so uh, constructing this building was one of the ways that the movie industry uh, uh, tried to address this problem, like both on a moral and honestly on a PR level. They wanted to put it behind them. So uh, the studios, again working with YWCA, uh, contributed a whole bunch of money to fund the construction of this building in 1926. And they hired the architect, uh, Julia Morgan, who was one of the very few prominent woman architects uh, working at the time. Julia Morgan uh, was based, I believe, in San Francisco, uh, but built most of her stuff around the Bay Area, but uh, is also known for like the Hearst Castle in San Simeon and a few LA landmarks like the, um, the uh, Herald Examiner building downtown. And it was a talent incubator really, because in addition to just giving you a place to live and hang out with other women, uh, they would have classes and uh, professional training, um, acting and singing classes and things like that. Now, over the years, uh, there were about 10,000 women who lived here at one point in time during its 50 years. And like, this was some of the A-list people, uh, the best known actresses of all time. So people like Rita Moreno and Sally Struthers, uh, Donna Reed from It's a Wonderful Life, Kim Novak, Barbara Eden before she landed uh, the I Dream of Jeannie gig, Sharon Tate was here in the early 60s. Ayn Rand came in the 20s trying to make it as a screenwriter. Um, and uh, of course, Marilyn Monroe, who was here from 1948 to 49. I've read that uh, she posed nude for photographs to earn the money to make rent here. By the mid 60s or so, uh, it was becoming like less popular to live in this kind of environment uh, and becoming more acceptable for a, a woman to live, let's say, with her boyfriend in the same place. And so uh, there was something a little bit old fashioned about this kind of living environment. Um, so they started losing money and they had to expand their membership to other sectors of the entertainment business. They stopped serving meals. Um, by the end of its years, uh, the Hollywood Studio Club was basically a hotel for transient women. And in 1975, they decided to close down despite some petitions to keep them up. Um, now, I spent a little time this afternoon looking at the nomination form uh, for the Hollywood Studio Club to the National Register of Historic Places. It happened in 1980, five years after it closed down. And there were letters of recommendation uh, from all corners of the industry. So um, actors, studio heads, preservationists, um, media, there's someone from Hollywood Reporter, politicians, just like everybody wanted to honor 
this place uh, and keep it preserved. Literally a hundred pages of recommendations in, in that nomination form. And I believe just a few years ago, 2018, uh, it became a, a crisis center for uh, women that needed shelter. So this is still helping women who need it, um, just like it did when, when this, uh, this building was first built in 1926. Thanks for doing LA with me.